Hey everybody, welcome back to another National 5 Physics Pass Paper Walkthrough and this time it's the 2023 Multiple Choice Paper. Now there's loads of places you can find this paper, there's the SQA website, but I'm going to go to our website, that's the Calder Glen High School Physics webpage. I'm going to click on National 5 Pass Papers and there's the 2023 paper in the top row of the table there and the marking instructions are there as well. And don't forget, the other thing you need before starting any past paper is of course a calculator and the relationship sheet, which you can also get from our website under useful documents. There's the National 5 relationship sheet there, and we will refer to that whenever we get a calculation or a numerical question that requires a relationship. Right, here we go then. We're only going to have a look at the first 15 questions in this video, so it's the 2023 paper. The whole paper is two and a half hours, but the multiple choice should take you about 45 minutes for the 25 questions. First thing you'll see is the data sheet contains all the numbers you might need during the paper. If the data you're looking for isn't in the question, chances are it's going to be on this data sheet. So remember, pause the video if you want to have a go at the questions yourself first, and then come back when you're ready for the walkthrough. Right, let's jump straight in with question 1 out of 25 then, and the first 8 questions are from Dynamics and Space. So question 1. The letters X, Y and Z represent missing words from the following passage. Quantities that have both a magnitude and a direction are called... Well, that's vectors, so I'm going to highlight vectors under column X in the answer there. And then two examples of this type of quantity are Y and Z... Now, there's only five types of vectors you need to know about for National 5 Physics, and they are displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, and weight. And out of answers C, D, and E, the only one with two vectors is answer D. Force and acceleration are both vectors, so question one, answer D. Question two, a trolley is released from the top of a slope and passes between two light gates, P and Q, and the distance between the two is D. And the time taken for the car to pass through light gate P is T1. And the time taken for the car to pass through light gate Q is T2. So let's write them on the diagram. And the length of the card is L. And now we're looking for the instantaneous speed of the trolley at light gate Q. Well, when it passes through that second light gate at the bottom, then the speed of the trolley at that point will be the distance that goes through the gate divided by the time it takes to go through the gate. And the distance that goes through the gate is the length of the card L divided by T2. Let's have a look at the answers then. L over T2 is answer D. On we go then, question 3, this is graphs of motion. The graph shows how the speed of a runner changes during the last 8 seconds of a race. And we have to work out the distance travelled during the 8 seconds. Well, distance gone is the area under the speed time graph. So if we chop this into 3 simple shapes, 2 rectangles and a triangle, and we work out the area of each one, and then add them up, we will get the total distance gone. So area 1 is a rectangle, so the base times the height, 2 times 4 is 8, that's 8 metres. Area 2 is also a rectangle, and the base is equal to 6, and the height is equal to 4, so 6 times 4 is 24. And the last area, area 3, is a triangle, and the area of a triangle is a half the base times the height, that's a half of 6 times 2. And that gives us 6 metres. So if we take all three of those areas and add them together, that's 8 plus 24 plus 6 gives us an answer of 38 metres. And that corresponds to answer C. Question 4. A block is pushed 3 metres up a slope by a constant force of 6 newtons. We're told that the friction is 2 newtons. And the mass of the block is 1.5 kilograms. And we have to work out the work done by the pushing force in moving the block 3 metres up the slope. Well, straight to your relationship sheet here. 
And we'll look for the work done equation. Work done equals force times distance. It's the force you use times the distance you move. And the pushing force was 6 newtons. And the distance is 3 metres. Gives us a work done of 18 joules. And 18 joules corresponds to answer D. That's quite tricky because there's a lot of other numbers in the question there that we didn't need to use. Hmm, tricky. Question 5. A trolley of mass 4 kilograms is travelling along a track and accelerates from 2 metres per second to 6 metres per second. And we've to find the increase in the kinetic energy of the trolley. Well, we're going to need our kinetic energy relationship here. Ek equals a half mv squared. And we're going to work out its initial kinetic energy using the initial velocity. The initial velocity was 2 metres per second. That gives us an initial kinetic energy of 8 joules. And then do the same thing again using a half mv squared, but using the final velocity. So half the mass times 6 squared gives us 72 joules. So the kinetic energy has increased by 64 joules. And that corresponds to answer B. Now be careful here because you might be tempted to say, well, the speed increases by 4 metres per second. And if you sub the 4 in for the change in velocity, then that will give you a wrong answer for the change in kinetic energy. You've got to work out kinetic energy before, kinetic energy afterwards, and the difference between the two. 64 joules, 5B. Right, question 6. Question 6 is a relationship you have never seen before in your life. And with this type of question, all you have to do is substitute the numbers that you're given into the relationship and work out the unknown quantity. And in this case, we have to work out capital T, the no greenhouse temperature of the Earth. So looking at the relationship, we have to find a number to sub in for the symbol alpha and for the symbol small d, and we're told in the second last line of the question, the value for alpha for earth is 0 0.29. Now that's the proportion of incoming solar radiation that the earth reflects, but we're just going to sub the number in, 0 0.290 for alpha, and d is the mean distance from the sun to the earth, and it's 1 AU. Now an AU is an astronomical unit, but we've just to sub in that number. So let's just sub a 1 in for D on the bottom line there. And now let's substitute everything in and simplify it. So T squared will be 280 squared times the square root of 1 minus 0 0.29. And if you do that on your calculator, you'll get T squared is equal to 66,100. Now, wait a minute, that's one of the answers. But beware, because that's T squared. We're looking for the no greenhouse temperature of the Earth, so that's just T. So that will be 257 Kelvin. And 257 Kelvin corresponds to answer D. That's pretty tricky, but you will always get a question like this with an unfamiliar relationship. But you're just subbing in the numbers and finding the answer. Okay, question 7. Doris is a small, rocky, irregular-shaped object that orbits the Sun between Mars and Jupiter. And Doris is an example of... Well, between Mars and Jupiter, you've got the asteroid belt, so Doris is an asteroid. Question 8. A space vehicle has a mass of 350 kilograms, and it's free-falling vertically towards the surface of Mars. And the rocket engines are now fired, which apply a combined upwards force of 2,200 newtons on the vehicle. Now, as well as an upwards force on that rocket, then it's also going to have its weight downwards. And on Mars, the gravitational field strength from your data sheet is 3.7 newtons per kilogram. So if we work out the weight of the rocket, we'll be able to get a better overall picture of what's going on here. So its weight will be 350 times 3.7, and that's 1,295 newtons downwards. And let's show both of those forces on the diagram. So the weight downwards, 1,295 newtons, and the upwards force, the rocket engine force, is 2,200 newtons. So there's an unbalanced force upwards of 905 newtons. 
And remember we're told that the space vehicle is free falling vertically towards the surface of Mars. Now, let's have a look at the question. Is it just after the rocket engines are fired, the vehicle will? Well, if there's an unbalanced force acting upwards, then this will cause it to decelerate downwards. So it's going to slow down on the way towards the planet. And the only answer that corresponds to that is answer D. It will move towards the surface of Mars with a decreasing speed. That's it for the dynamics and space questions. Now it's on to electricity. Question 9. A uniform electric field exists between plates Q and R. The diagram shows the path taken by a particle P as it passes through the field. So which row in the table identifies the charge on particle P and the charge on plate Q and the charge on plate R? Hmm. Well, the thing to remember here is that opposite charges will attract each other. So if particle P was positive, then because particle P is being attracted downwards, then plate R would be negative and plate Q would be positive. Now let's see if that corresponds to any of the rows in the table. If P is positive, two possibilities there, then Q would be positive and R would be negative. So that all works out, that's answer E. Now we could try it the other way around, we could say what happens if P is negative. Well if P was negative it would be attracted down towards R and R would have to be positive and that isn't one of our options. So we were correct by saying that particle P was positive. Question 10. Alternating current, or AC, can be defined as a current where? Well, we're looking for an answer here that includes the statement of the current or the charges reversing direction. And the only possible answer then is answer C, the charges reverse direction at regular intervals. That's 10C. And you might notice here, some questions might take you 5 minutes, and some other questions might only take you 10 seconds. That was a wee 10 second question. OK, question 11. I've got a diagram here with an LED and a series resistor, and we're told the voltage across the LED is 2.2 volts. I'm going to put a little voltmeter in just to remind myself that my 2.2 volts is across the LED, and the current in the LED is 10 milliamps. Okay, I'm going to write that on my little diagram there, just as a wee reminder. And there's a prefix, milliamps, that's 10 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. And we have to work out the resistance of the resistor. So let's use Ohm's law here, R equals V over I. But what are we going to put in for V? Well, remember, the resistor's job is to limit the current in the LED and also to share the power supply values that the LED only gets 2.2 volts. So the resistor has to take the remaining share of the 5 volt supply. So it will be 5 minus 2.2 divided by the current 10 milliamps. That gives us 2.8 over 0 0.01. Gives us a resistance of 280 ohms. That's answer D. Question 12. It's a voltage divider circuit. And we have to work out the voltmeter reading. I always add another voltmeter onto these uh, diagrams. Just because these two voltmeters will share the supply voltage. So both of them together will always add up to 24. And we have to work out the bottom one. Now you've got a relationship on your relationship sheet that allows you to do that. It's V2 equals R2 over R1 plus R2 times the supply voltage. So if we sub in everything there... R2 is 1.2 over the two resistors added together, that's 1.2 plus 2.4, that should be, times the supply voltage, which was 24 volts. And if you do that on your calculator, you'll get an answer of V2 is equal to 8 volts. So it's 8 volts that we're looking for. And that corresponds to answer A. Now you could also have done this by looking at the ratio of the two resistors. So if we think about both those voltmeters there, the top resistor is twice as big as the bottom resistor, so V1 will be twice as big as V2. There's a 2 to 1 ratio, but we have to split up the 24 volts in a 
2 to 1 ratio, so that would be 16 to 8. So the bottom voltage V2 is 8 volts. Same answer. So if you're not confident with ratios, then make sure you use the relationship. Question 13. Circuit containing an LDR switches on a motor when the light level drops below a certain value. And the resistance of the LDR increases as light level decreases. So which of the following shows this circuit? So we're looking for a circuit that has got an LDR in it firstly. So D and E have both got thermistors in them. So let's chop them out. And then we're left with answer A, B or C that have all got LDRs in them. Now, you might remember turd and lurd. So for an LDR, lurd. What does that mean? It means as the light level goes up, the resistance goes down. But in this question, it's the opposite of that. It's the light level going down, so the resistance is going up. So we want the LDR in the bottom position in the circuit. So that is answer C. And when the LDR is in that position, when it gets dark, its resistance goes up, so it will get more of a share of the voltage, so the voltage across the LDR increases, that makes the transistor conduct, and that turns on the motor. Ok, moving on, question 14. A slow cooker has a power rating of 250 watts, and it's switched on for 2 hours, so how much energy was used by the slow cooker in this time? Straight to your relationship sheet. Energy per times time, that's 250 times the time in seconds. And be careful here because 2 hours is 2 times 60 times 60. And when you do that on your calculator, you will get an answer of 1,800,000 joules. And that corresponds to answer E. And be careful here because if you don't convert to seconds, you'll get 250 times 2 hours. That will give you answer B. And if you only multiply by 60 once, then you'll get answer C. So remember, all the right wrong answers are there. Watch out for all those distractors. Right, last one for this video, question 15. A student investigates the relationship between the power developed in a resistor and the resistance of the resistor. And the voltage across the resistor and the temperature of the resistor are kept constant during the investigation. And the graph shows the results. We've got power on the y-axis, resistance on the x-axis. And we have to determine the voltage across the resistor. Now we can do that by picking any point on that graph. So let's just circle a point here. And if we read off the corresponding power and resistance, so the power is 4 watts when the resistance is 1 ohm, then we can use the relationship P equals V squared over R. Rearrange it, so V squared equals P times R. And then 4 times 1 gives us V squared is equal to 4, so the voltage is equal to 2 volts. And that corresponds to answer C. Now, we could have done that with any point on the graph. Let's choose another point. And again, if we do P equals V squared over R, and rearrange to find V, then we get the same answer, V equals 2 volts. Question 16 is on heat energy. That's properties of matter. And we will cover that, and waves, and radiation, in part 2 of the video, when we'll cover the rest of this paper. We'll see you in the next one.